Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Ask Us Anything session. We're coming back with another top three questions of the month. Your feedback was very positive and you wanted more, so here we are, and we'll make sure to have this type of webinar once per month. So stay with us and let's get started. My name is Irene and I'm a Senior Customer Education Specialist and I will be hosting this session live, answering your questions. And behind the scenes, we have Ben with us, answering questions in the background as well. And after the proper introductions, let's check our agenda for the day. As mentioned at the beginning, today we'll see your questions. To be more exact, we have gathered questions from our support team in regards to the topics that you were most concerned with. And today we'll see our top three of them without posting any names or data. Of course, right after our presentation, we'll jump into your questions. And just a reminder here that our webinar is recorded, so all of you will be receiving an email with it once we're done, so feel free to share it. And in regards to your questions, we need them, so please use the Q&A button on your meeting controls on your screen, and no worries, you can post anonymous questions too. And without further delay, let's get into it. So our first question is, we have 10 branches in our portal for 10 different teams in our company. Can I set up a new branch admin in one of those branches who has access only to the content, test, and assignment submissions of the members of her team? That's a great question, but let's see that together. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, I hope that you all see my screen right now. Great. So as I understand, you wish to have one new branch admin in one of your 10 branches who only has access to content related to your team and not the rest of the content in the portal, right? Well, let's click in an existing branch and see how we can do that. So I'm just going to click here, branches, and let's click here, the marketing branch. Now, if I go all the way down, we have this setting here, disallow members of this branch to log in from main domain URL. Once you have this setting checked, the members of this branch, also branch admins included, cannot sign in through your main portal. Even if they try to, they will get a message on screen and they will be instructed to log in through the branch URL. So the branch admins will have access to the branch people's reports, to the assignments, to their profiles, and so on, and manage their teams more effectively. Of course, if you are a super admin, you can switch within branches with the simple shortcut that I'm just going to show you. But first, we need to ensure that you have added yourself within the branch. So let's check that really quick together. So if I go all the way down, I'm just going to type my name. Yes, I am added. So if I hover here, the shortcut is here under the Suites branch. So if I click the marketing branch, right now I'm entering this branch as a branch admin. And of course I can add users, groups, courses, and have access to all the reports. And if I want to go back to my main account, well, the revert button is here. So I'm back into my account, into the main portal, and there is no reason to log out and log in or use other credentials. Now, let's go to question number two. Uh, so the question number two is, uh, is it possible to set up automations that get triggered only specific branches? Another interesting question. But before we get into it, let's get a little context here and at the same time share again my screen. So the automations are basically processes that you can set up in the system to save time from daily tasks and follow-ups by making them run automatically. They are here under the events ending and they are available for premium plans and up. Now, going back to the question, we're looking to see if there are automations that can get triggered only in certain branches. Well, here the answer is yes, there are automations that can be triggered in specific branches only. For example, if I click here, uh, let's type the word assign. We have an automation Z hours after course X assignment, assign courses. Now, this filter button exists. And if I click it, I can simply select the branch that this automation will be triggered. Simple as that. So once you click it, 
you can select if um, this uh, automation will be set up for uh, courses that exist within a branch or a group. And some other examples that have the filter button, in case you're interested in that even more. Uh, let's see, we have on course, ex oh, let me just type it, on course, ex completion, uh, assign courses. So let me just remove that so we can find that together. Okay, uh, let's type one more time. Uh, on course, ex completion, assign courses. Again, the filter button is here, so you can filter branches. And another one is uh, Z hours after last login, deactivate or delete user. And there we have the filter button that can be applied in branches. And this one, uh, we can also select the user type that we want to deactivate to. I hope this helps. And let's get into our last question, which is, uh, let me just bring that from. Uh, so the final question, before we jump into your questions, we currently have a notification set up so that when someone completes every course from our 12 core training bundle of courses, we get a notification within HR. Can we get only one notification when someone has finished all of them all together? Another great question, and I'm gonna share my screen uh, one more time. So I'm afraid that it's not possible to trigger a notification when a set of courses is completed. There is a notification for single courses, but not when that specific requirement is met. This is a great suggestion though, that we could consider implementing. However, we have a workaround for you. So to achieve the same results, um, and I'm talking about the learning paths. So what you're basically asking is to have a single notification when someone completes all the courses on the core bundle. While you still are able to only receive notifications for specific courses, what we need to do is create a learning path and set prerequisites for the courses according to the order they should be completed. For this, I'm just gonna switch into an instructor and I have a set of courses uh, that we can use as an example here. So we have sales skills with course code BE1, BE2, and BE3. So what we need to do is click on the BE2 and go to the rules and path here. And under the learning path, we are going to set BE1 as the prerequisite. Click save and then back on our dashboard. So we can do the same thing for BE3. Again, rules and path. Uh, and we're gonna search for BE2. Here it is, click save, and that's it. Now, at this point, we can use the notification on course completion for the course BE3. The learner will need to complete courses B1, 2, and 3, according to that order. And this way, all courses are completed and the HR will receive only one notification per learner. And now it's time to start with your own questions. So let me just um, open up our Q&A here. I see a lot of questions. Ben has done great work so far. So let's see. Uh, can a person, this is a question from an anonymous uh, uh, um, attendee, can a person be an admin in a branch but a learner in another one? Hmm, that's a really great question. Uh, so in this case, um, you need to have admins that can also complete courses as learners, if I understood correctly. Well, once you add a user typing a user, that user type will follow them all along to all training environments. But if you're interested in that, what you can do is change the role they have for the courses um, they need to take as learners. Because every time we add an admin in a course, the default role they get is the instructor one. So I'm just going to uh, get into this course, working efficiently together. And from the edit course, I'm going to the users tab. And here I can see the role that my users have. So this is me. So what you need to do is change into a learner that branch admin. So the original user type will follow them all along. There's no need for you to change user types, but when it comes to the role they have for those specific courses, it will be a learner 
they will complete their courses, their progress will be on the reports. And even if I change them back as an instructors after they have completed the course, the progress will not be lost. I hope this helps. So let's get into your next questions. They are a lot. Um, so uh, there's a question coming from uh, Sarah. Once a deadline is changed with one learner, it changes for all. It's reflected based on the last action being assigned to the learner. Is there any way to stop that? Um, I think that you're talking about the expiration dates that we can set up uh, into courses. If that is the case, I'm afraid that when it comes to the course itself, once you set up the expiration date, uh, this will apply to all. However, if you have learners that didn't manage to uh, complete the course on time, but for some reason you want to give them a second chance, we have the option to extend uh, their deadline for that specific course. Um, let's see if I have a course that I have any um, expired learners. Um, let's see here under users in progress. Hmm. I'm afraid that I don't have any learners that are expired, but once your learners are, are expired, if you hover into a user from the course users, you will have an extra option here, which will be a calendar. So once you click it, you can extend the expiration date for that specific user only. Um, I hope this is what you're looking for. If not, please send us an email at training team at talentlms.com and we will get back to you. Um, uh, according to what you need. Now, uh, let's go into the second question. Um, this is also from an anonymous attendee. What if my branch admin has a specific subset of users in a branch that they are responsible for? Can we make it so they only have access to those users? Well, let me just clarify here. You want your branch admins to have uh, access to a specific subset of users. Is that due to security reasons, so they can see only um, those users and not everybody else, or is it for the convenience and for having less workload on their daily tasks? Well, if it's for some, well, if it's for security reasons, we have an alternative for you uh, because I'm afraid that when a branch admin uh, is in a branch, they don't, we don't have an option to, uh, let's say, separate the training audience into smaller subsets and they will have access to all. So a branch admin has basically access to all the user profiles, all the reports that that branch has. So if you don't want to break that audience in uh, extra branches, what you can do is go to the reports, that this branch admin needs to have access to. So let's click into the report section here. Uh, in its report, we have the export button and right next to the export button, we have this little functionality, the schedule functionality. So from here, what you can basically do is click the custom recipients, add those emails, those branch admins emails here and set up a frequency when they need to have access to that report. Click schedule. And that's it. So those branch admins will have access only to reports uh, about the users and not anybody else. Now, if it's not a security thing and it's just a thing of workload, within the branch, the admins have access to group reports. So maybe they can check just the group reports. So if they click here, they will have access to all the group reports. And in this case, they can access the group they're looking for and have a report that will show the training progress of the group. I hope this helps. Um, next question is again from Sarah. Is there any way to assign by topic instead of assigning each course to each learner? Uh, well, I think that maybe the groups will help you in that. So if you have a set of courses that could be grouped together under a title, under a specific topic, what you can do is create a group, add those courses in that group, name that group under the topic uh, you're referring to, add the users, and with just two clicks, 
you can do a mass assignment. Let's see how we can do that. Uh, let's create a group together. So I'm just going to click uh, add group here. And let's say that I have a topic called data protection. I'm just adding the title here. I can also write a short description of what this group is about. So the instructors and the administrators will know about uh, this group. Um, click add group. And here it is. Now, at this point, I will head into the courses and I will start adding the courses that will be included under this topic. So I'm randomly clicking the plus icon here. And once you're done, go back to the users and start adding the users just like that, one by one. Now, once you're done with adding the courses and the users, what you need to do is click here, mass actions, enroll users in group courses, click again, enroll. And now all these people added in the course will be assigned to all five courses at once with just two clicks. So this is how you can do it. And just a note here the, about the two numbers. The second number will show you how many courses exist in this group. The first number will show you in how many courses that user has already been enrolled to. And even if you complete uh, the mass actions, um, so to do the mass enrollment, um, the progress that those users already have to the existing courses will not be affected. The system will be smart enough to uh, assign the remaining courses and no progress is lost. I hope this will help. Now, another question coming from Donald. Can you limit what courses employees can see or take in the course catalog? Well, that's a great question. Yes, you can definitely do that. I mean, by the time that you have your course catalog available from your learners, the learners can easily click the course catalog button and access all your courses. Now, if you want to limit, let's say, the courses that those users will have access to, what you need to do is go switch as an instructor, go to an existing course. Let's go to this one again, uh, working efficiently together and go to edit course. Now here we have these two settings, active and hide from course catalog. It depends now what you want to do. If you want to, um, you can keep your course active and hidden from the course catalog. So you need to check this option here. This way the course can be assigned to individual users, but the rest of them will not find out because it's not showing in the course catalog. Or you can simply just deactivate the course and it's not going to show in the course catalog. Only instructors can access it and edit it. So depending on what you want to do, you can either select the active button or active uh, and hidden from course catalog. I hope this helps. Uh, now let's go to another question, also from an anonymous attendee. I see my branch admins have the ability to add courses to a branch. Two questions. A, will these courses show up on other branches or the main site? How can I control this? And B, can I prevent the admins from creating courses altogether? Great questions. So let's answer them one by one. But in this case, I need to switch as an admin. So question number one, will these courses show up on other branches or the main site? Well, by default, if we click in the accountant settings and scroll all the way down, by default, we have this option checked. So branch courses in main course catalog. This means that all the courses created in the branch will also show in the main uh, portal, in the main course catalog. If you want that to prevent it, just uncheck the checkbox here, save, and now each course created in the branch will not show in the main course catalog. Now, about the second question, can I prevent the admins from creating courses altogether? Yes. Definitely you can. So if you go back and click on the user types, let's go to an existing user type. Uh, let's go to here to the admin type. If I click here, I can see the permissions that my admin has at the moment. So what you want to do is prevent admins from creating courses altogether. So we're going into the course uh, permission but this point, at this point, we want to do something really specific. We want to prevent them from creating courses. But I guess that you do want them to um, view or delete or in general have access to the course. 
So instead of checking, unchecking the course checkbox here, I'm just going to uncheck the create permission and I'm going to click save. And right now, and if I do, Right now, this user type, each person that has been assigned to that user type, will not be possible to create any courses. They can still view, they can probably update or delete, but it's not possible for them to create. Uh, I hope this is what you were looking for. Now, we do have time for more questions, so let's get into the next one. So, another question coming from uh, Jack, is there an automation that can be filtered by custom fields? I want to automatically assign courses to people in a specific department that I have as custom fields. Great question. Um, when it comes to the automations, the only filters that we have is about branches or user types or courses. Um, I'm afraid that we do not have any automations filtered by custom fields. But what you can do though, if you want to achieve um, the same uh, thing is to work with the custom reports. If your uh, subscription supports custom reports, we have one, maybe two workarounds that might work for you. Now let's go and click on the custom report and let me explain what I'm talking about. So let's click add report. In the custom reports, you can create uh, a report of your own with your own outputs and your own rules. So what you can basically do is create a custom report uh, and add rules about uh, the custom field. So we have rules here that can uh, bring back results uh, based on custom fields. At the moment, I have the location uh, as a custom field on my, um, on my portal, but I guess in your case, you will have more options here. Once you create the report, what you can do, so let's go back into an existing report. Let's say that this report is what we have created together. You can go here to the mass actions. And if you go all the way down, we have this option enroll to course. So this is how you can enroll people to those specific courses and those people have been filtered through the custom fields. Now, another workaround for that is to, if you want to save time, because at this point, if you have, let's say five courses, you will need to do that five times because you can select one course at a time. Let's say that you have more courses. What you can do is create groups under the names of those custom user fields and add those courses in the respective groups. Now, in this case, you will still create a custom report using the rule for the custom fields. So you can bring back the results and the people that needs to be assigned to those courses. But in this case, what you're gonna do is add them in a group. So you will select the group. Um, they need to uh, be added. And once you do that, then you will go back into the group and complete the mass assignment by the mass actions button, like we've shown uh, in a previous question. I hope this workaround works. Uh, if this is not what you're looking for, please send us an email and we will get back to you. Uh, now, next question, uh, also from Jack. How to change the name of the instructor user type to mentor across my platform? That's a really great question there. And let's get back into the home dashboard. And uh, this is something that we can definitely do in Talent LMS. Uh, we can definitely bring our own terminology in Talent LMS and what we can, how we can do that. Click the account and settings. And under the section of locale where we select the default language of the site, we have this little pencil icon called overrides. So what we need to do is click it and click our override. Now you want to replace the word instructor. So I'm just gonna type it here, instructor. And now I'm just gonna add the mentor, the overridden. Click add override, dismiss this box. And now I'm going all the way down and save. Uh, I do remember that we, have, that we used to have the instructor word here, but right now we have the mentor. So this is how you can replace wording within Talent LMS. And in case you want to delete uh, that override, what you need to do is go back again to the pencil icon, 
uh, find it, click the X button and delete it. Dismiss this window again. Okay, all the way down, save it. And now if I hover here, I'm back into the instructor. Hope this helps. And uh, let me stop sharing because I don't see any other questions. We have answered them all. So I guess that this is a wrap. Uh, so thank you all for joining today with us. Um, thank you for participating and posting your questions. And I know that you might have more. So let me just remind you how to get in touch with us. Um, our email is trainingteam at talentlms.com. And of course, we love your feedback. So our survey link is just posted on the chat. It takes less than a minute. And we love to hear your thoughts with what you expect from us for future webinars. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Ben, for answering all the questions in the background. It was so helpful. And we hope to see you on our next webinars. We have our webinar academy page set up on our website, uh, talentlms.com slash forward webinars, where you can see past ones and the upcoming ones. And again, thank you very much. And until next time, happy training.